Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, I thought it's time to give a little bit of love to my trailer. All right, guys, well, another thank you for getting us over 100,000 subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please think about uh, doing so. It will, uh, it really helps us out. And, uh, and you'll get to be notified about more of my crazy uh, projects. So uh, over the years, I've had quite a few people asking about my trailer. So I bought this trailer back just before I bought Harry, because uh, basically I knew I needed to go and uh, pick Harry up from Victoria. So uh, it was... Uh, Ended up being, I don't know, that's six or seven hour drive uh, each way. And I realized that it was going to be, it wasn't actually gonna cost me that much more to buy a trailer than it would be to rent one. So um, I did a search and I found this sort of old lump. But uh, I've uh, done quite a few modifications to it over the years. And um, it's actually, it's definitely not perfect, but it's quite practical in a lot of ways. So to obviously to start with, uh, this is a car trailer, but uh, I thought I could use, make it something a bit more usable. And basically it can turn from what you see here into to this. So basically what I've done is I made myself the, uh, the world's largest box trailer. So this is a fantastic trailer for taking loads to the tip and, uh, and things like that. So I can just pile it up with stuff. Um, it has gotten a lot of use over the years and uh, in both configurations. So although it is far from perfect, it is quite handy having a trailer that can do two things. And I'll take you around and show you some of the things that I did now and how I actually made this up as a, uh, as a convertible trailer, as a transformer if you like. So first thing you'll see is actually the front and back of the trailer are actually the ramps. So what I did is I made them so that they are universal and they're held in by these pins that I just, are looking quite rusty now. Pins connected to the sides, so when you undo both pins, undo the pins which are on a chain, stay with the, uh, the trailer, and then this will fold down and be uh, your tailgate and these sides are an angle iron framework with a piece of galvanized flat galvanized steel and this is the uh, the framework of the car trailer itself and it's just held on by some wing nuts on the sides here that hold the sides on and as you can see they once once the wing nuts are undone uh, it all comes away and, and to make the uh, the hinge system what I did is uh, I just on the edges of the ramp I just uh, welded in a piece of steel tube with a bit of a pin and there's two pins and uh, corresponding bits of tube on the trailer itself and I actually made the pins so they're not exactly the same length so basically you can line up one first and then the other because if they're exact same length then when you try and actually line it up you've got to get them both in the right spot before you can slide it on as it is I can line up this side first this side is just in and then I can line up the other side. So it makes it much easier to put it on and off. But these things weigh a ton. They are extremely heavy. I probably uh, overbuilt them slightly. And there you can see it's quite quick and easy to convert it back to a car trailer. So um, the box trailer part of it, I'm actually quite happy with. It works quite well. But one of the big issues I've had is the carrying the ramps when I've got a car on the trailer. When I first planned it, I didn't think it out very well, and I'll show you how I originally set it up. Basically, I designed it because I've got these hinges on the, uh, on the trailer, these pins that lock into the ends of the trailer to make these the, uh, the front and the back. I made it so that... I made it so these would fit in these pins on the edge of the trailer and then again with the same wing nuts going through the side, locking it into place on both sides. What I didn't really think about is when the car is on here, cars are quite wide and the, uh, these things get in the way. They're often, if the car is too close to the side, you can't slip these in. You're also lifting a very heavy ramp in next to the side of the car and also it's very hard to then tie it down because these get in the way of where the wheels are to strap the car up. So not a great solution. So my next quick fix solution for putting the ramps was I could actually slide, I made it so I could slide them under the car 
I ended up holding him in with the same wing nuts in through underneath to the base of the trailer and, uh, and then at the back end I made up this bar with a couple of bolts in it that stick into the ends of the ramp, lock the ramp side to side and then these are then bolted to the, uh, the trailer itself. So another solution that worked but not very good. This system is still cumbersome, it's still a matter of trying to slide these down under the car. When you've got a car on here it's hard to actually get them to drag them from the back where obviously we use as ramps all the way up to the front and then locking them in and uh, and sort of wrestling with all this stuff underneath when underneath a car that's on the on the uh, trailer it's it worked but it wasn't a great solution that is what brings me to what i'm doing today and i think today we need to come up with a better solution to hold these ramps so i thought it's time today to come up with a better solution and i'm going to i'm not going to reinvent the wheel Basically what I want to build is a, some frames that uh, the existing ramps can just slide underneath the, uh, the trailer and lock into. So um, let's start looking at what we're going to do. Uh, first thing I think is we need to get the trailer onto the hoist and looking at it because it's got dual rear wheels, I think the only way to get it up there is to pull off the rear, rearmost wheels of the trailer and then I might be able to get the arms of the hoist onto it and be able to lift it up in the air. All right, that was a little bit of messing around, but the trailer's on the hoist. And my plan now is to make up a framework that I can actually slide the ramps into. So the way they clip in currently is I just have a piece of angle iron on the front here, and this sits into a slot in the back of the, uh, the trailer, so they can't, uh, they can't slip out. And that works really well. But as you can see, they're quite heavy, and I'd like it to be as simple as possible. Okay, so I welded up my initial frame, I stuck it under the trailer and I was going backwards and forwards trying to refine the design and, and sort of think through how it was going to actually work. And I've come up with the, uh, come to the conclusion that the best way to do it is to actually have to take the ramps, when the ramps are set up as ramps, I'm gonna have to pick them up, turn them around and put them in backwards. And then again, you know, pull them out, turn them around and put them down. It would be nice if I could just pull them down and clip them on, that'd be much better. But getting the clearances I need for the, um, the height of the, the tongue end of the trailer to slide in and not being able to put any cross braces underneath and all the rest of it, I can just make this so much more solid and secure and also tuck it up higher underneath the trailer because I have to worry about the, uh, the travel of the, uh, the axles underneath the trailer. I need to make sure that it's not going to, uh, you know, if I hit a big bump with a, with a load on it, it's not going to bash into the, uh, the bottom of this. So there's lots to think about. And uh, yeah, I, I think I've just, I've come to the conclusion that it's just going to be a revision of the design so I can actually tighten these rails up and tighten them in a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do now. Let's cut this apart, tighten all, all the tolerances and then put it back together again the way I want it. Okay, so I have my first frame propped up underneath the back of the trailer. And you can see here, it's all sort of in the spot where I want it ready to go. But I need to make some mounts to mount it up underneath the trailer.
Okay, for the time being, we have everything tacked in place. So now it's time to try it out and see if it actually works. So in my wisdom, uh, the test one that I did is on the side that I can't actually get the ramp into because my toolbox is in the way right there. So uh, there's not enough room to be able to get it in, but uh, it looks good. So I'm going to go with it and uh, I'm going to tack on the other one and I'll do the test fit on this one. Well, that fits exactly how I wanted it to. It's nice and tight in there. That is perfect. So uh, let's pull it out, get it back up in the air and weld it all up completely. All right, well, that's looking really good. They're nice and solid in there now. I've uh, just put some, uh, some Rust Converter paint onto all of the welds. I'm just gonna go now round, just give a quick hit with some subframe black just to, uh, just to make it sort of look a little bit prettier and tidied up under here and uh, maybe protect it for a few more years. I'm not gonna go to town cleaning it up. I'm just gonna sort of give it a squirt. It's a pretty rough old trailer. Just uh, look after it for a few more years. All right, so now I've got my ramp all mounted in. The last thing I need to do is actually have a way to lock it so it doesn't just slide out when I'm driving. And that's where I've, uh, I went and bought a couple of these um, spring latches. So it can sort of spring, hold it open and then it'll uh, latch in. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, go in here. I'm gonna mount it in here somewhere, drill a hole through uh, my frame and then build a hole, drill a hole into the ramp itself and this will just uh, pin in through the ramp and lock it into place so it won't go anywhere. And there we have a working latch. Just open it up, clip it in, and the ramp slides out. All right, well, while I'm here, um, after the debacle last time I tried to use this trailer, uh, some of you might have seen that I, uh, I realized that one of the wheel bearings on the other side was completely demolished. And this is spinning nicely. There's not a lot of play in it, but it, it sounds dry. So I'm gonna go around and just double check the uh, wheel bearings before I actually go and change the bearing on the other side that I stole off of the other trailer. So it's not really the greatest. Those who haven't played with wheel bearings, pop the top. And yeah, this looks very, very dry. One old seal out, the old bearing is there. To change it, you actually have to get rid of the inner and outer race. So the race there, it needs to be removed and so does the, uh, the outer race, which is, which is just here. All right, so there is the old race removed. Basically, this goes through and doesn't quite, uh, doesn't fit through the uh, end of the race, so that was enough to push it out. There we go. So I got myself a, uh, a new bearing kit, and to start with, we need to then put in the races that we pulled out. You need to make sure that the taper faces to the outsides of the hub, because that's where the bearing is gonna sit into. And uh, basically what we wanna do is we're gonna try and get this back in here. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can actually, um, you can put this, if you heat up the hub and put the, uh, the race in the freezer, it can definitely help and, uh, and make things go, uh, go much smoother. Um, I've got the press. These things generally aren't that crazy difficult to get in, so I'm just gonna press it in now. Uh, just trying to make sure you press it in nice and square. You don't wanna tilt it. So uh, let's start pressing this one. And then we've got the, um, the smaller one for the other side. So 
So this is the messy part of the job. There's tools, I've actually got a, sort of a press tool to do it. It doesn't do a very good job. Um, the, best, the best way is to actually just grab a gloop of grease and put it in your palm and just go through and work your way around and work it into the end of the bearing. It works quite well, it's just really messy, but I haven't found a way that's not messy to change wheel bearings. I always like to chuck a good glob of uh, grease inside the hub as well. Doesn't have to be solid, but uh, just so that there's plenty in there and it's just not going to be dry. So uh, grease is cheap and it's <laughs> worth it for the peace of mind. Okay, that is the inside done. Hub back on. Then we put our packed outer bearing in, then the washer and then the castle nut and do it all up nice and tight. And then back it off just lightly, just enough to you get nice free movement of the hub and then you should be good. Then put the cotter pin in, bend it over, put a little bit of grease into the cap and then knock the cap back on and you're done. All right, well, I know it's something a little bit different this week working on the trailer, but it's something I've been putting off for quite some time and uh, it's a good thing now. I've got those ramps sorted. It's just gonna make my life so much easier every time I need to go and uh, pick up a car, move a car around, which may be the case coming sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, for uh, a project coming up. So stay tuned for that. That's a little bit of a insight. As soon as we can move through borders again, uh, we will, uh, I think I'll be uh, putting this thing to good use. And if you really wanna help out, you can see the videos ad free a day before everybody else. Uh, on Just follow us on Patreon. There's a link in the description. All right guys, I'll see you in the next one. See you guys.